Shared governance means that a number of governmental and non-governmental actors, which are formally or informally entitled, jointly run the protected area authority and share responsibility. We are talking about transboundary management when the two protected area administrative bodies have joint decision-making procedures and some formal framework for joint actions. Although in Eastern Europe there are some examples of transboundary protected areas where a good collaboration between the two management units has been developed, it is difficult to find functional governance systems of this type based on formal arrangements and on joint decision-making procedures. Motivated staff, who strongly believe that nature does not care for political boundaries, foster major changes by working together on an almost daily basis around noisy Le Lake at the Austrian-Hungarian border. The Steppe Lake is situated between the easternmost part of the Alps, the Zivinkel Plain and the Hansag Plain. The national border between Austria and Hungary cuts right through this natural region. Having the same valleys, lakes, plains, birds and so on, both park administrations are trying to look like one national park for the public, who are not interested to know about the two national park directorates. They are interested in the sites, natural values and ecotourism programs in both countries. Well, first of all, we consider it to be one national park with necessarily two administrations because we have two constitutions, two laws, and this is why we need two administrations. This is the same national park, same site, so on. It's not working if, uh, if uh, the land is managed by another way and another site in another way. Of course, we have um, the same tasks and the same objectives in habitat management. The joint activities of the Transboundary National Park are based on three important pillars. The Joint National Park Committee, joint daily activities and joint programs and projects. Meetings take place twice a year. This joint commission, the Bilateral National Park Commission as we call it, uh, goes back to the planning phase of the National Park from 1988 to 1992. They have to agree on strategic issues. Uh, so they have to update each other, of course, but also uh, to define the next uh, important things to, to deal with and to agree on the procedures. The most important pillar, this is the second one, the daily contact with colleagues. The rangers of both paths know each other and work together. We have got joint monitoring activities, we have got joint development projects, joint ecotouristic projects, joint ecological projects. So it's, uh, it's really daily activities. The colleagues of the two national parks work together on joint conservation programs, from their preparation to implementation and evaluation. Examples of such programs include the protection and management of Sodic lakes, species conservation programs and joint European Union projects. We do not have any different approaches uh, in, in habitat management like the measures taken, for instance, in, in, in grazing, uh, hay making, uh, reed cutting, water management. So they are all done in, in targeting the same um, problems and trying to achieve the same uh, progress. Joint daily activities are based very much on personal relationship and common activities. The staff of the two protected areas work very closely together. They meet often, at least once per month, and sometimes even daily, when implementing joint projects. Well, we would gain more efficiency uh, if it would be possible to meet more often, which is, of course, a question of, of time. We're lucky that all the colleagues who are working in both sides of the national parks are those people who look for the joint activities possibilities. I think we still have some, some lobbying to, to do on both sides of the border uh, in demonstrating the, the 
concrete and, and, and valuable contributions of nature conservation. Together, the Austrian and Hungarian colleagues can take part on international projects, international monitoring projects, for instance, uh, migrating birds or international uh, transnational project of uh, ecotourism or something like that. So uh, we, are, we can work together, we can represent the area together. So that's, that's very good advantage. It's not only about nature conservation, but also the influence and the impact on, on the regional development. One disadvantage is probably uh, we, have got, uh, we have got two directorates. I, I don't see disadvantages in cooperation, I just see problems and, and obstacles and bottlenecks. And here, of course, uh, we have to deal with the fact that the national park authorities cannot change uh, the logistic background of, of both countries. But, uh, but sometimes uh, it's a, it's a problem that uh, the political system is different. Uh, this means we have to uh, be aware of this, uh, of this kind of asymmetric situation and we have to overcome these problems related to that. Transcending state borders for conservation is paramount in Europe a highly fragmented continent with many internal borders. Long-term transboundary cooperation between protected areas is essential in overcoming language and political barriers, thus contributing to peace and understanding, as well as to an effective conservation of wider territories. <laughs>